This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Welcome everyone to Florida Faith Church Online, a fresh expression of church with a new energy and a community creating a revival for the sake of the gospel. We miss you all that worship with us physically in Fort Lauderdale so much, and we are so thankful that everyone is able to join us online with our online church family throughout the week for our events and worship just like this. If you're watching on Facebook, it would be great. You could help us out if you would please click the share button right now so that your family and friends can join. I also wanna ask you to please email us your prayer requests. We have a team of prayer warriors that help spread God's love and they want to pray for you. Prayer works, especially in these times, we need prayer. It's as easy as clicking on the connect button from the Florida Faith Church app and sending us your prayer requests. Now, before I pray, I wanna send out a big happy birthday wish to the people listed on your screen. Happy birthday! <laughs> Um, usually we like to celebrate on Sundays and we name the people if you want it. And it gives us an excuse to uh, eat way too much cake on a Sunday. <laughs> Since we're all quarantined, now you have a reason to celebrate at home and treat yourself to something special. So please join me in wishing everyone a happy birthday. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we pray for everybody who is fighting this disease in some way fighting boredom, fighting loneliness. We pray for the first responders and for those businesses that are challenged in this time, for the people with work, with school, with home, and with family challenges. And we thank you for today. You loved us before we were even born, and you know us even better than we know ourselves. Thank you for creating us, for walking with us, and for your love that never ceases. Thank you for Mother's Day, and mothers everywhere. We pray and we thank you for the blessing of our moms, whether she is with us now physically or she walks with us spiritually. We lift up all these things in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's children said, amen. Now turn to the person you're worshiping with or send a text message to someone, especially mom, and tell them that God loves them and so do you. God loves you, and so do I. <laughs> I want to invite you to prayerfully consider joining us in ministry this year by becoming a faith partner. For your gift of $20 per month, or a one-time gift of $240, we would like to send you this beautiful cross. It's made of nails, symbolizing Jesus' passion and sacrifice on the cross for you, and it's wound with different color copper wire. It's adjustable and can be worn to show your faith and love to the world. Your gift will help us bring the message of God's love to a hurting world. It's moments like this that we are reminded that the church is not a building. The church is you and me. We are in an unprecedented time in history. Now is the best time to support the life-giving, life-transforming work of Florida Faith Church because people around the world need to know that Jesus loves them. There are three ways to give online. All you have to do is click the word give. You can also text the word faith give to the number 77977, or you can mail a check to Florida Faith Church. One. Hall of Fame Drive, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33316. We believe that as a family, we are called to not only spread the message of the gospel to the world, but to look after one another. Would you please consider giving today? Thank you.
Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I'm Mark's mom, and I'm going to read scripture this morning from 1 John 4, verses 9 to 17, and John 19, verses 25 to 27. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him and john 19 25 to 27 near the cross of jesus stood his mother his mother's sister mary the wife of clopas and mary magdalene when jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved Standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Thanks for reading scripture, Mom. Just as Jesus Christ needed and loved his mother, we Christians need each other as a family of faith. I mean, look at what Jesus does even from the cross for his mom in her community of faith. She's standing at the base of the cross with all of her friends. And Jesus, from the agonizing torture of the cross, was still concerned about the welfare of his mom. Jesus' love for his mother was a direct reflection of the love she had shown him. Our purpose today is twofold. First is to honor the Lord Jesus with everything we say and do. And the second is to honor our mothers. It's Mother's Day, and I want to start by quoting a book called Bringing Up Boys by James Dobson. It says, I have the highest respect and admiration for those who have been blessed to be called mothers. There are few assignments in human experience that require the array of skills and wisdom needed by a mom in fulfilling her everyday duties. Isn't that the truth? She must be a resident psychologist, physician, theologian, educator, nurse, chef, taxi driver, fire marshal, and an occasional police officer. And if she succeeds in each of these responsibilities, she gets to do it all again tomorrow. If your mom or the mother figure in your life is anything like my mom, you call on her during the absolute best times when things are great and the worst times of your life. And she has been your savior on many occasions. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Today, just as mom's love goes beyond our realm of understanding, and our moms have many times become our savior in life, I want to share with you what it means for Jesus to be the savior and the power of super mom. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this worship service. And we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are pleasing to you, O oh, Father, our rock and our Redeemer. We pray that all of your messages here, whether spoken or unspoken, are experienced by everyone. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen.
men. So I've been blessed many times in my life. I've tried to play my own God for years. I thought for a long time that I knew what my life should be. And I could control almost every aspect of it. And I definitely have had to be saved uh, many times. <laughs> In fact, some of you that are watching right now have been with me <laughs> when I have had to be saved. God works in funny ways. I'm a water rebel. If you know me long enough, you know that I love kayaking and boating and kite surfing, whitewater river rafting. And one of the reasons that I moved to Florida was uh, for scuba diving. I've been in a situation scuba diving when, when I've even had to rescue a buddy underwater because he stopped breathing. There was one time when I was with my dad scuba diving in the Sea of Cortez and a school of hammerhead sharks came in on us and we had to run a boat aground to rescue my father who ended up swimming onto an island to get away from the sharks. Have you ever been saved? And what were you saved from? Or maybe the question is, do you need saving? And what is, that, what is it that you need to be saved from? Why did someone have to save you? Or when were you saved? Have you been saved spiritually, financially, physically? And who saved you? Well, Jesus Christ is Savior, and that is much more than a title. It's all summed up in His name. The name Jesus is actually the translation of the Hebrew Joshua or Yeshua, which means Jehovah saves. Names were actually incredibly important in the first part of the first century. The naming of a child was as important as the birth of a child. A name was not just an identifier of the child, it was a reflection of his or her very character. And the same hold true for Jesus. In fact, the prophet Isaiah pre predicted long before Jesus' birth that God would send a Savior. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then... As we all know, an angel appears to Joseph in a dream and he reveals the Savior's name is to be Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, we find this. It says, Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit and she will have a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. <laughs> no pressure there. <laughs> Everything we need to know about Jesus, his purpose, his life, his aim, is all sum summed up in his name. Jesus is Savior. Okay, so if we say Jesus is Savior, it suggests someone or something needs some saving. <laughs> so when we proclaim Jesus is Savior, it's us recognizing that we need to be saved. All right, so that brings up the issue of sin. And lots of churches don't like to talk about sin because sin is negative. And church is supposed to be, right, this warm, fuzzy, and I'm supposed to leave all lifted up and, and wonderful. Well, I guess. But uh, I have to tell you that I am a big sinner. And if I tell you that we're all sinners, you might not feel so good. But how can we possibly hear the good news that Jesus saves if we don't first hear the bad news that we need some saving? Jesus is Savior means there is good news. That's the whole premise of the gospel, the good news of the gospel. So let's look at sin. We can't understand God's story apart from sin. So in the beginning, God created everything and he made it beautiful. As a matter of fact, God called it Bakertov, which means very good. Well, the devil was not happy with good. 
right? The devil's a mean guy. He doesn't like good. So the devil aspired to become God himself. And obviously the devil couldn't become God. So he set out to destroy that which God created very good, which means Adam and Eve in the garden. God's will was that Adam and Eve would have anything they wanted. They lived in this paradise, except the fruit from the tree in the center of the garden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so Satan, Satan tempts them to violate God's will to sin. And humanity has been sinning ever since. A sin is anything that, or thought or action that falls short of God's will. Hence, I'm a big sinner. God is perfect. And anything we do falls short of his perfection and is considered sin. The Bible gives us the word pictures to illustrate what this kind of means. So sin is, is like an archer who misses the target. Right, so the, the archer draws back the bow and sends the arrow off on its way. But instead of hitting the bullseye, it veers off course and misses the mark. Now, the arrow may only miss a, a little bit or it, may, uh, or it may miss it by a lot, but the result is the same. The arrow doesn't land where it is supposed to land. The same is true of sin. God's will is like the center of the target. And when we sin, we fall short of his will or we miss the mark. And this is something that we do every day. As the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even when we're not aware of it, we commit sin by the things that we do or by the things that we fail to do or by the way that we think. This is why we need Jesus only he can save us. He's our savior. All we have to do is look at the world. I mean, look at the COVID-19 world and we realize that this world is broken. We thought all these things could save us. So first thing we thought, we, we said, okay, education could save us. But we are in the midst of the information age. And we have instant access to these great libraries of the world and can communicate across the globe instantaneously. We measure time not in seconds anymore, but in nanoseconds. Yet the more, connected, the, the more connection that we have with each other, the more isolated we become from each other. Choosing to spend time in front of our screens, in front of our phones, our iPads, our tablets, absorbing information that many times fails miserably in changing us or our world. Well, I mean, it changes us, but not necessarily for the better. Or we think that politics is, is going to save us. Right? And any good politician will say, we are not here to save the world. <laughs> Politics. But in the 200 plus year experience that we call America, we recognize that we are in danger of being torn asunder because of the division that exists among us. Government cannot save humanity. We pour money into institutions and programs in an effort to transform culture. And the more money that we spend, the more culture transforms us. The more money we spend on poverty, the more people fall below the poverty line, it seems. The more money we spend on education, the further our students fall behind. And that is not because of the teachers. That's not their fault. We have great teachers and tremendous institutions doing their best work to teach our children, but education is not the total answer to what ails us. Education does not mean total salvation. My friends, if you are conscious of nothing else, we must be conscious of our own weakness and our own helplessness. We are looking for salvation. We need a hand to come down and, and lift us up and, and pick us up, pick ourselves up. We need to be saved from the habits which have become our chains, our idols. We need to be saved from our temptations. 
from our fears, from our anxieties. We need to be saved from our mistakes. We need to be saved from prioritizing stuff that we choose to put in front of God. We need to be saved from COVID-19. And guess what? That is the repetitive story of the Bible. Mankind falls, and in every case, Jesus offers us salvation. God gives us his free gift of grace and gives us the power of the Holy Spirit, which enables us to face time and to meet eternity and eventually stand before God. In the center of the word sin is the letter I. The key of our salvation is deliverance from the I. E. Stanley Jones says about this whole salvation thing, the business of redemption is not to get us into heaven, but to get heaven into us. Not to get us out of hell, but to get hell out of us. <laughs> we work so hard to stay out of hell that we've forgotten about the hell in us. But that's exactly what Jesus came to save us from. The Apostle John wrote in his letter to the early Christians who were scattered across the ancient East because of their persecution. He was writing to remind them that God's love was the reason for their salvation. God's love was the reason he sent his son Jesus. Scripture speaks of God's infinite, matchless love. How the Holy Spirit how Jesus dwells inside us, how the power of the Holy Spirit makes us seek God, makes you aware of God's presence in your life. That's why you're here. That's why you're, you're participating in this worship, is that the Holy Spirit brought you here. It's woven in your DNA. It's the Spirit in our hearts that helps us to know God's love. It's the Spirit that gives us the certainty that we are truly at peace with God. The key to accepting God's salvation is surrender, just like you did to your mama when you were young. Jesus gives us the example. He surrendered himself on the cross. The Apostle Paul said it this way, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's Galatians 2.20. Here's an interesting point. Jesus is only referred to as Savior a total of 15 times in the New Testament. 15 times. Two-thirds of the book of the New Testament make no reference to him at all as Savior, including Romans and Colossians, which are the two most theological writings of the New Testament. But that's okay. They don't have to refer to him as Savior because his name says it all. Jesus is Savior. And as if that wasn't enough, he gives us a living, breathing example. Our mothers. Is Jesus your Savior? Happy Mother's Day. Let's pray. Father God, Thank you for salvation. Thank you for sending your only son, Jesus, as our Savior. Lord, I recognize that just as Adam and Eve and just as the history of mankind, I many times try to do things that are completely on my own. I step out on my own and say, I can do this without you, God. And I ignore your beauty and your love and your grace in my life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a living example of these characteristics through my mother or that mother figure in my life. Thank you, God, for rescuing me. Thank you for salvation. 
Holy Spirit, interpret my gratitude and my love for you so it carries the full weight of my heart, soul, body, spirit. Lord God, I, I love you. You're my strength, my rock, my fortress. Thank you for rescuing me from trying to, to play God on my own. I recognize that I've tried to rescue myself from my sins by overlooking you, by prioritizing other stuff in my life. Lord, enable me to embrace you as the only one, my rescuer, my hope, and my savior. We especially pray for all of those prayer praises and requests sent to us and for all of those prayer requests that have been spoken and unspoken. And now we lift up all these things the way Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's children say, Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us online. It means the world that you took the time to gather virtually with us. We will continue with this same format for a while, so please ask your friends to join us online. You can see this by subscribing to Florida Faith Church YouTube page on Facebook or anytime on the Florida Faith Church website and app. Now let's have our benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace and his joy and his salvation in your going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until that day in which you come to stand before Jesus, in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Happy Mother's Day. Go in peace. Amen.